Hey, what's up, everybody? Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow us for more third and long content. Yo, what's good? This is Eric Armstead. Welcome to another episode of Third and Long. Exciting today, got a special guest. My first non-teammate guest, which I'm really excited about. So we're, we're branching off in, you know, some new avenues, getting across the league. Um, my guest today is Christian Wilkins. <laughs> For the people, hey people, hey everyone, what's up? Um, Christian is one of the best defense alignment in the league, um, has been for a few years now. Uh, just signed a huge contract, the third highest paid defensive tackle of all time, sixth highest paid uh, defensive player of all time. Crazy, right? No, man. I ain't know all that. <laughs> yeah. Just... Um, Christian's been dominating the league. He's also one of the, the biggest personalities in the league. Um, definitely one, one of the funniest people uh, in the NFL, um, Christian Wilkins. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Hello. Um, I got to correct you, though, a little bit. Obviously, we're not we weren't officially ever teammates, but obviously just starting out, um, you know, we're obviously brothers in arms. We train together. We do all that in the offseason. Mm -hmm. Obviously, look up to you a lot as a big brother. So we definitely teammates of another kind, just not never officially on the same roster together. But yeah. obviously look at you as, you know, a big bro teammate, all that good stuff. So nah, appreciate you having me on. No, nah, I appreciate you, bro. I yeah, appreciate so. you. Appreciate you joining us. Feelings are mutual. You know, um, when I met you. Uh, you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Talk, talk about that. Talk about that. Nah. <laughs> when I met you your rookie year, yeah. um, you know, uh, you know, you're my little homie. And now, you know, seeing where you're at in the league and how your career has gone, who you are as a man, too, man, it's uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm proud, um, you know, to, to say that uh, I've been here, you know, with that journey in the NFL and, um, you know, seeing your growth has been been amazing, man. So definitely proud of you. Yeah. Um, Glad, glad that, you know, we can call each other brothers and in, in the relationship that we built uh, throughout these years. So excited about today. Excited to, um, you know, have a dope conversation with you. I feel like uh, when I do these 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 shows and do these episodes, um, obviously, I know you very well, but I feel like I get to, you know, I get I get to do research and learn more about you and mm -hmm. more about your background and throughout these conversations, you know, I'm able to to learn more and, and build a better bond. So no, for sure. Um, you know, you're from Boston. Yeah, Springfield, Massachusetts. Springfield. Yeah, okay. right. That's where, shout, shout out to Springfield, the 413 stand that's where the, uh, up. Yes, sir. No. That's where the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame is, that's right? That's right. So, you know, I got a little hooper in me, too, for those who may <laughs> for those who may question my, my ball skills. You know, we, we I grew up hooping and doing all that, the, the birthplace of basketball. So that's yeah. where the Hall of Fame is. Yes, for sir. Sure. So mm -hmm. how was it like growing up in uh, Springfield? Um... To be honest, I mean, it was different. There wasn't really much there. Um, you know what I mean? Like Springfield is a very, like, very inner city, mm -hmm. um, humble, really humble beginnings. I got a big family, eight brothers and sisters, and, and my mom who, uh, you know, single parent who just tried to do the best she could uh, for us growing up and everything. Um, so obviously, you know, times were tough, but I was just like a kid living, you know, and just, you know, was protected, you know, by eight older siblings and a mom. So eight older eight, siblings. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. So, wow. uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was cool. Um, we didn't have much, but I felt like I had everything I needed and mm -hmm. that was good enough for me. And, you know, we were all just able to, you know, just bond and you get close with each other. And, you mm -hmm. know, we kind of, you know, did our thing in, in Springfield and, I'm glad I was able to be one to make it out and now put on for the city. So, mm -hmm. yeah. no, nah, definitely. You know, having having those siblings, you know, you you never feel like that void is missing, and and uh, you know, you always have somebody to to either somebody's either picking on you or right. somebody's either joking with you, somebody to play with. Yeah, you know, you can always find somebody to do something with. No, nah, that's definitely <laughs> true. No, that's a fact. Like. Um, but it's up there with a few rare occasions where nobody was messing with you and they like, you know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Or everybody was getting on your nerves. But nah, it's definitely, that's definitely true. Um, you always have someone sticking up for you or someone to argue with, someone to fight with, but that's just part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely owe a lot of, to who I am and my personality and just my, just everything. A lot of, you know, even the person I am, the position I'm in today to my mm -hmm. older siblings, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm a firm believer in that. So it's, it was definitely great growing up with a big family and, you know, we all had our purpose. We all had our place, you know, in our and things like that. So 
Nice. Um, it was definitely a blessing. That's awesome. So you, you grew up a Boston sports fan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you're so, you getting so, into it. So, yes, so, yes. so Patriots. Oh, I was a diehard Pats fan growing up. All Boston sports teams. Celtics still am to this day. Diehard Celtics. Um, obviously no longer a Patriots fan no more. Um, yeah, how, how was that uh, growing up being a Patriot fan and, you know, playing in the division and playing against yeah, them yeah. every year? No, that was really cool. Um, that was really special. Uh, just even like um, my first year in the league, uh, my first two years in the league were Tom's last two, mm -hmm. obviously. So that was like a big deal for yeah, me yeah, going yeah. up against Tom. Didn't even get close to him. I was, I was, a, I was, I <laughs> was just struggling. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Right. It was just like, damn, okay, like that's really Tom that's over Tom, there. You man, know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and you know, it, it was cool to be on the field with him and be able to say that. And like, of course you get a lot of texts from family and friends, but like, oh, you was really out there with Tom. But like, mm -hmm. you know, I was a sorry rookie and a second year player. So I didn't get close to him. <laughs> Couldn't get a sack or no, really no pressures or nothing. But it was like, no. you know, but you know. I got, was, I, got, <laughs> I got one, I got one. I played against Tom once. I got one QB hit. And yeah, I was like, hey, hey, that's the best right, QB hit I ever had. Hey, it's, yeah, you know, you got that. So that's cool. <laughs> but, um, but like I said, that was cool. I quickly was no longer a Patriots fan though, obviously once I got drafted. Yeah. But it was still cool to obviously play against them. Them, go home once a year, have people come to the game, have yeah. support people from high school, whatever. Uh, just kind of be there to support you whenever we did that one game back home. So would you want to would you want to play for them uh, before it's all said and done? Um, mm, I don't know about all that, uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. I don't want to write anybody off. We'll, yeah. we'll never know how this thing ends up or how you this journey know. goes. But I don't never, I will never write nothing off. Yeah. yeah. When uh, so when did you get into sports? Like personally, like growing up. Yeah, really for me, like, I feel like I've always been around sports. You know, my like I said, like a lot of who I am, I owe to like my siblings and my family. I've had two older brothers play football. Um, they kind of introduced the game to me. I uh, really just, they were always just playing sports, no matter what it was, even in the street, playing basketball, playing football, whatever it is. So like, I kind of got introduced to sports at a young age. Uh, and that was always cool for me, you know, mm -hmm. just always learn how to be competitive. And again, in a big house, in a big family, you learn how to be competitive fast, mm -hmm. whether it's eating, whether it's you fighting over who's getting in the shower, who's whatever, who's watching TV, like you always competing, you know, just naturally. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my competitive edge and who I am and my nature from that standpoint, you know, again, give a lot, give a lot of love there to my, from my family and my upbringing. But mm -hmm. I've always kind of grew up around sports and been introduced to them at an early So in age. high school, high school, you played just football or you played? Come on now, uh, come on! Don't do me like that. You boys an athlete, man. Come on, I did it all. Play? So What'd you play? I, uh, I thought you said you did your research, bro. Come on. So I, I did. I, I'm, I'm teeing it up no, for okay, you. Okay, yeah, let I'm me well, teeing it well, up for well, you. Thanks for throwing up the line. Yeah. Now I'm about to, yeah, you know, I'm because that's what I used to do on the court. So your boy was a hooper too. Okay. Um, I, I balled up. I balled out. Um, and then I did track and field as okay. well. What you what you, what uh what events did you do in track and field? Uh, you know, I did the uh, shot and dish. The shot and dish. Okay. Yeah, javelin. I was a thrower. You know, you and then throw. and then I did the occasional <laughs> big boy four by one, one hundred. You know, nothing. You. You won't see me in the record books, but your boy did it. Um, okay. but, hoop, but hooping was like really my second sport. Mm -hmm. I, I loved hooping. I was a thousand point scorer in high school. Okay. Um, you know, I did it all. I had a had a you know a nice little game, nice little post game, occasional you know mid range, yeah. occasional three. You yeah. know, not too much time out there, but I had a decent little game. Um, so uh, Paul Pierce was your favorite player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, diehard Boston sports guy. So Paul was my guy growing up, and you know, I tried to emulate the game a little. Nah, bit, you, you, know, you but, it's crazy. So when we were um, when we were shooting around. Um, you know, we were training at Clemson last yeah. off season, shooting around in the gym. This man can really like, <laughs> he really can emulate Paul Pierce, like down to the form, <laughs> down to the see it, exactly it, the same. I'm like, bro, you really love this man. But no, chill out because <laughs> I feel like part of that just happened for me just being a kid, like you know, like yeah, you yeah. know, when you do you do a yeah, kid, Kobe, you're on the court, five, yeah, four, exactly. three, two, one, you emulating everything. So mm -hmm. like, I guess kind of now it just is what it is. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of just stuck with it, and then like you know whatever, but. But yeah, um, but yeah, and you know, and I think I beat you in horse or pig or whatever we were playing too. So you you left that out. You left that out. I, uh, I beat you in horse or pig or whatever remember. we was playing. I think it was like two one. In my me though. Uh, you might have got one in no, there. It was at we Clemson had to go work, We had to go work out though. Time out. It was at Clemson too. So I know I wouldn't let you beat me at my <laughs> at, at my home court. You nah, know what I'm saying. You, you, no. <laughs> I think we might have. I think it might have been two two, and then we had to go work right. out. Right? Yeah. All right. We'll we say it was a time. I mean, we'll we, say it was hey, a time. We got, we got plenty of time to to, right. to go again. Right. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll make it happen. Nah. Um. So go through high school playing multiple sports. How you end up? Uh. How you end up at Clemson? Uh. Well. It wasn't because of these, you know, these nice little NIL deals that these kids <laughs> is getting now and all they that. They're getting bags I, you now. They're getting bags now. So it definitely wasn't for that reason. <laughs> but uh, for me, like, 
um, just growing up some way, somehow, I, I kind of heard about Clemson at a young age, like a family friend. I grew up in South Carolina, so like mm -hmm. Clemson was at least kind of like on my mind. Like, like I remember hearing about Clemson and like obviously uh, the Thunder and Lightning in the backfield yeah. uh, with C.J. Spiller and uh, yeah. James Davis. So like I yeah. remember them hearing about them when I was a young kid. Um, and even before I even knew college football was a possibility for me. So like Clemson was kind of like at least a little ingrained in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but then just, you know, as I was going through the process, as I was growing up, just a lot of things I was looking for in a college. Um, you know, Clemson was preaching that. Clemson was all about those things. I wanted to grow spiritually, academically, and socially, and obviously athletically. And I felt like Clemson gave me that best opportunity to do that, even going far away from home, from Massachusetts uh, to South Carolina. I felt right at home, felt like I could make the adjustment and, um, you know, was able to have a good, solid career there at Clemson, do some good more, things. More than good and solid, yeah, yeah, bro. I, I keep it humble. We're going um, to get, get, <laughs> get into that, though. So yeah. you— um, you decided to wear number 42 Absolutely. at Clemson, and yeah. uh, I heard that number has a special meaning to you. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Very, very special meaning to me. Um, so my grandfather, uh, the person I love most in this world, and uh, we talk about emulating people, someone I try mm -hmm. to definitely emulate and be like and carry on his spirit. Um, you know, he, he was tragically killed um, in 2011. Um, and again, he was born in 1942. So that always became like a thing for me just to kind of honor him and carry mm -hmm. on his legacy and wear number 42 for him. And just as like an extra, um, for extra little added mm -hmm. motivation. Um, you know, anytime I'm tired, anytime I'm going through something, anytime I'm doing yeah. whatever, you just look down at that number. And, you know, that was my why, you know, what allowed me to remember why I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, you know, so that, that, that was that there for me, even now, like I still try to, you know, uh, carry on his legacy in a lot of different ways and little things, um, even like signing the football, I still sign everything 42 mm -hmm. uh, just because that's just that's just what it is. And that's yeah. a way to just, again, honor him in a little way. And, you know, I'll sign some people like, why don't you put your number on? I'm like, nope, it's there. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't need 94 or whatever. But yeah, uh, that's 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 just how I honor him. In and you can tell by the way you carry yourself, the the passion you play with, how you, um, you know, that tenacity, that that effort that you give, you can tell mm -hmm. that you you play with a deeper meaning. And so Absolutely. I think people knowing that deeper meaning is 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 amazing, man. And um you're you're an aspiring football player on the yeah. field. Um, you know, you 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 wanted to to leave a legacy and, and honor him. You definitely have done that. Um at Clemson starting off, had an amazing career, not yeah. just not just solid career. Yeah. Um two national championships. Two count them up, two. That's two. right. Four, what was it? Three, three natties appearances. Mm -hmm. um, so was, one, two. Yeah, yeah, one, two. Um, Played four times. It was a, it was a great run. We had all American. Mm -hmm. um, you won the. Is it the Nagurski no, Award? Uh, I was a runner up for that twice. We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I was runner up, or I, I was there. And that's for that's twice. for the best best lineman, best uh, D lineman, best defensive player. The, oh, that's yeah. player in general. Nagurski, yeah. Wow, the so the, I was a finalist for the Outland my senior year, which was wow. the interior lineman. Wow, so I, you know, I don't even know about these words because I was never in contention for any <laughs> of these. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, two national championships you played on, you know, uh, one of the or you can say the best D line in yeah. college football history. Uh, you, Austin Bryant, Cleveland Farrell, yeah. Dexter Lawrence, all all of us are homies. Um, the Power Rangers, yep, man. That's right. Man. Um, when did uh, when did you guys come up with that? Um, at Clemson. Yeah. First off, shout out to the Rangers. Those are my guys. Uh, my <laughs> my best friends, my brothers. Um, you know all that. Dang, you trying to you bring up my grandfather? They bring up the Rangers. My bad, my bad. Bro. You try you try to make me get see, you get see, all emotional. Boy. See on third and long, oh, we, 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 <laughs> nah. we we go some <laughs> heartfelt it. stuff. Nah, I appreciate we it. We go though. with some heartfelt stuff because yeah. I, I really want people to understand who we are nah, as, absolutely. as people. You know, taking the helmet off. And then also, you know, we're going to talk football and, and life stuff too, but I think it's important to, for people to see, you know, what drives us, what motivates no, us. absolutely. And, um, you know, our background, so. No, for sure. Um, but no, I appreciate that. But the Rangers, that. man. Yeah, yeah, my guys, man. Those are, <laughs> those are my brothers, my best friends, um, you know, and uh, we, it's just crazy because like, you know, we all, well, three of us came in together. Uh, we graduated high school 2015, all came in together. Me, uh, Cleveland Farrell, Austin Bryant, um, you know, and. You know, we were just young guys trying to get it all from different parts of the, you know, the East Coast. Austin's from some low country, some, some podunk <laughs> low country yeah. town, you know, Pavo, Georgia. <laughs> Lee's from, uh, two, uh, you know, two up, two down Virginia, VA. <laughs> and he'll let you know about it. And I'm from Massachusetts. So we all just had like, you know, different upbringings, different lifestyles. But 
we all came in together in the same class and, you know, we just hit it off and we was homies ever since. Mm -hmm. um, and then our fat little brother joined us the year later, <laughs> uh, Big Dex, Dexter Lawrence, shout out to Dex. Shout um, to Dex. You know, and he just kind of completed the whole yeah. Rangers and the D-line. Like he obviously mm -hmm. added so much, you know, not too many times you see a 6'5", 300 and... We'll be, I won't get into you know what I'm saying. Freshman, we're not gonna get into that. Right, we're gonna get into that. But freshmen come in, like you know, and just do what he did on the field. But obviously, just add so much of a di dynamic to already our relationship mm -hmm. uh, as friends, um, you know, and everything like that. So, you know, and I was kind of the ringleader of the Power Ranger things. I'm a big kid, as everybody knows. I'm a big time Power Ranger fan. Yeah. Um. So you know, I was just kind of like, hey, like we need to come up, like you, we, need, you know, what I'm saying need we need an identity or yeah. something. You know what I mean? So that's kind of just become a thing, and it's carried with us now, and we still call each other uh, Power Rangers or whatever. And you see, obviously, when I you know get a sack or make a play, mm -hmm. I'm always morphing. That's kind of still my thing, because again, yeah. that's like you know, that's a shout out to those guys, and just again, me mm -hmm. just being a. A, a big kid uh, yeah. again, and just having fun while I'm playing, and then and them having a huge impact on your life too, and and uh, being able to go through you know life, college, NFL, these things, these experiences together with a group Absolutely. of people that you love is is nothing you know nothing more special than that. Um, you know, doing all these amazing things by yourself wouldn't be as fulfilling, but going yeah. through it with with other people. No, that's a that's a real good point. I'll bring up a couple of things on that too, because like. Obviously, as it is like in the NFL and living this life and the commitment, to like all the things it takes, a lot of people don't under, really don't understand that or get that. Um, your family, not your friends, not your wife, not whoever, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like, obviously we know, like we, you know what I'm saying? We understand all that goes into being great at what we do and in this lifestyle, but it's cool just to have like your, you know, your, your core and your three best friends kind of go through it with you. Um, so, you know, when you talk about certain situations, you know, they can relate and all that. And then even as we're going through the league, you know, we are biggest, we're each other's biggest fans and each other's biggest supporters too. Like there's no one else I want to see do well on game day than mm -hmm. Dex and Cleveland and Austin, you know, and see them succeed. So, and I know they got my back from that standpoint too. So it's kind of dope, uh, you know what I mean? And, you know, we just carry on that brotherhood and it's, 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 it's all good. Nah, so are you guys the best college uh, defense in line yeah, of all time? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to leave that for the people. Um, <laughs> but I will say, uh, there, there are worth some other good defensive lines, I will say, but I think, you know, just what we were able to do as a front um, when you just factor everything in winning all Americans productions, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, we're right there at the top. It's drafted. Just, yeah, exactly. Um, Getting draft three, three first rounders. Guys, first round. Yeah. And Austin, a fourth Austin. rounder, like, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, that was different. I mean, I don't know how many other D lines had three first rounders, but I know there were some good D linemen, but I don't think, um, you know, yeah. too many did that. So yeah, y'all definitely up there. Uh, George has been good as right. of late. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. but you know, you guys were the top of the food chain, man. Y'all did some special cover of Sports Illustrated, which yeah, was we did do that. One yeah, of the yeah. dopest things that I was seen. Cool. I forget, we were training yeah. at Clemson. I'm walking around. I'm like, <laughs> dang, these dudes are really legends here. <laughs> I walk around. They love like, these dang, dudes. They love these dudes here, man. They name yeah. all over the building. Cover of Sports Illustrated. Y'all really, yeah, you got a little statue, you know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they need one, right? Um, yeah. But y'all really built you know, really built that place. And, and that, that's like special, man. Yeah, no, like, you know, obviously we, we went in at a good time, you know, when Clemson was doing well and, and, you know, winning championships and stuff like that. So it kind of just worked out well for us from that standpoint. But I got to obviously show love to our predecessors at Clemson too, because they helped build that thing so much. And mm -hmm. that's not just saying that to be a nice guy for the cameras. Like I, the way I, you know, would hope that people, like a big point of motivation for me while I was at Clemson, I was like, damn, I got to, live on and, you know, carry this legacy on for Daquan Bowers, uh, mm -hmm. Grady Jarrett, DJ mm -hmm. Reader, all those guys that were literally like gods to me when I went to Clemson. I'm like, Shag Lawson. yeah, Shaq Lawson, mm -hmm. you know, like all these guys that, you know, put so much in and just like, you know, I just got drafted or played in the league now. And I'm like, dang, okay, like we got to do something. We got to, you know, create this thing and keep this thing going kind of, you know, so the next generation could look at us the way I looked at them and respected them and the things they were able to do. Too, mm -hmm. so. No, that's amazing. So you talk about, you know, the big reason you went to Clemson was growing uh, as a person, just in general, not even a football player. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure Dabo had a big, yeah. had a big. Dabo, <laughs> sweetie, you made Dabo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Dabo said that uh, he felt like you could be president uh, one day or, yeah. or or be best friends with the, <laughs> with the president, one of the two. Yeah, uh, Coach Sweeney always saying some some crazy stuff, but yeah, he, he, he said that a bunch and still stands by that. He's like, he's either gonna be in the White House or <laughs> he's one way or another, he's gonna be in the White House. He's yeah. gonna be best friends with the president <laughs> or he's gonna be the president. I mean, I guess that, you know, um, you know, I appreciate Coach saying that. I guess, mm -hmm. you know, it's a you know, high, high praise and high honor, I guess, but mm -hmm. 
I don't know about being in, being no president. I ain't the most political, <laughs> the most political person in the world. But we gonna see. Hey man, nah, sure. right? Who's, no, right, who's, right, right, who was right. just our president? Right, right. The most unpolitical person right. ever. Hey, yeah, we're not gonna get into that. Yeah, we know, we, but, we're, not, um, we're not gonna make this about politics. But, right. Yeah. Um, also heard that you were uh, a substitute teacher in college. Yeah, I did that as well. Um, that How was, was that? <laughs> that was honestly no. I, I, I like talking about this because that was really a dope experience for me. Um, just kind of, you know, my senior, like I was able to graduate um, pretty much in like two and a half years. I got my degree early, but then I ended up coming back for my senior year mm -hmm. um, and getting another degree, uh, getting a master's. But um, like during that time, I had so much free time, like in the spring. So I was like, dang, I'm back in college again for my fourth year. I got a lot of free time on my hand and I really wanted to grow in a lot of different ways other than just football. I really wanted to like kind of exhaust everything in my last year in college. So I was like, you know, I got a lot of free time. I could use a couple extra dollars too, because they was paying. You was getting nice. Yeah. Sixty five dollars a day. There wasn't no nil. For, you know what I'm saying? Sixty five, eighty five dollars a day, or whatever it was. Day? Dang. Yeah, for for substitution. Yeah. I'm like, That's hey, nice. I can go. You know, I wouldn't mind. You know, yeah, I can get a couple. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Go buy ice cream at the, you know, yeah. at the little creamery, you yeah. know, in Clemson or something. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, go to, you know, it's whatever. Um, so I was able to do that. It was cool. Um, just to be able to have that experience and just like to. You know, again, exhaust everything while I was there at Clemson. And it was dope because I went in there like going to teach and thinking I was going to be able to teach the kids a lot. But they ended up teaching me so much more. And just like, you know, I taught kindergarten, special needs, high school, everything. Um, and you like, you know, it was kind of, it was just really like humbling. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just to kind of see the kids and their innocence and like, you know, just get, you know, just laughing with them and like, you know, teaching them a little bit and, and all that. So that was really, you know, awesome experience for me. I'm glad I did that. And I even... Continue that trend a couple of years ago doing that here in the NFL mm -hmm. uh, in Miami. I was able to go substitute at uh, Miramar High School, okay. which was actually really cool for me too. Um, you know, so, but yeah, um, you know how it is too. When you, when you substitute, is it like, do you get to choose the subject or is yeah, it just- Yeah, so again, like it, it was like basically like you kind of got a list of like all uh -huh. the classes, all the ages, yeah. whatever. So like were you like, man, I, I kind of know a little bit yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So no, exactly. So it was just kind of like, it was cool. So like you could make your own plan for the day. Like they yeah. had a guide for you, but you, uh -huh. you know, you lead in the classroom. So you yeah. can do whatever you want. So- you know, typically try to stay away from math. You know, I yeah. got a couple gym classes and you know, we was just hooping the whole time. Like I was, <laughs> hey, hey, bring the balls out, you know? Yeah. So I mean, that was the best for me. You know, I'm in my shorts blocking kids shots. I was having a good time, whatever. But like, you know, I was able to get in a couple gym classes, but I also wanted to mix it up. So mm -hmm. like, I did like a science class one time. Again, I told you special needs, uh, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Um, you know, and just kind of, just kind of figure it out and wing it. Like, you know, do a little research maybe the night before kind of. and. Mm -hmm. Just get set up to do what you got to do for class. But it was, it was cool. I, I'm glad I did that. Um, you know, and usually you know how it is when you get a substitute teacher, you know, the kids act a little funny. Yeah. They're like, you know, try to be. Yeah. Did you have respect? Went, hey, I was, respect? I was letting okay. them know as soon as I walked in there. And, you know, just the physical presence, too. Yeah. Um, you know, they ain't hey, messing ain't with the gonna substitute. ain't going to be none of that today. Right. Hey, hey, listen. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron, <laughs> hey, sit, sit down. down. Sit down. You know, sit, sit down. Like, right. <laughs> But you know, I was trying to, you know, it was it was cool. It was fun. And but a big part of the reason too why I wanted to be a substitute too, um, because like I heard a stat like when I was in college too, I was like, um, not a lot of students have access to a male teacher, let alone a black male teacher. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was important for me too, just to kind of again be that presence, kind of be that inspirational figure for, you know what I'm saying, not just the kids that look like me, but for everybody too. No. So I thought that was a uh, really, really important for me. And like once I kind of heard that, I was like, you know what, let me, you know, again, try to give back into another way or, you know, give these kids, these students, whoever, you know, a little bit of hope and, mm -hmm. you know, also, you know, give, be a good positive black male influence for yeah. them, you know. Now, teachers, I think, play the most important role in Absolutely. our society, man. Just the opportunity they have to have a huge, long-lasting impact on a kid's life mm -hmm. in a positive or negative way. Absolutely. It's so uh, instrumental um for for youth and when you look around like kids are at school more than they're at home they're at yeah. home or any any place and that role model that adult in the life that they're interacting with every day has that um has that kid in their hand and they can shape and mold their yeah. their life and so amazing teachers man i think you know lead to amazing young people and, yeah. and, uh, and amazing adults so yeah it's cool you know i've I haven't had that experience, but that sound that sounded like no, it, really it was dope. smooth. And like to your point too, um, you know, I don't, I know for a fact I don't remember what was going on in every class that I've ever been in, but I could probably name, like if I think about, it, I could really probably name every teacher from K to, mm -hmm. you know, up until college. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So like, 
that is important, the role of teachers, you know, mm -hmm. whether, like you said, whether they're impo they're impacting a way or a positive or a negative way, like, mm -hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? You remember those things and you remember those teachers. So no, definitely. that's always important for sure. So you had a great, sounds like you had a great time at Clemson. Mm -hmm. Definitely a proud alum. Yeah. Uh, you balled out on the field, grew as a person. Now it's time for the next transition in your life, yeah. going, going to the NFL. Um, were, you, were you uneasy, nervous about entering the league? kind of feeling like, dang, like, I don't know. Or how, how were you feeling like entering the league? Yeah, it was definitely a mix of things. Like, you know, obviously, um, I, like you said, I had a, a really good college career, but I knew that wasn't gonna do nothing for me once I got into the league. But I knew like, you know, people in a sense kind of knew who I was, or at least was familiar a little bit to mm -hmm. kind of like, all right, this, you know. Um, so, and then obviously coming in as a first round pick, there's a lot of expectation, there's a lot of pressure. And I'll be the first one to tell you, where my camera? You. I was probably the, the it was probably the worst year of my life, rookie year, like it was terrible. Like I, I thought I forgot how to play football, like it yeah. was bad. And, you know, and that was definitely a humbling experience for me, like mm -hmm. coming in obviously to Miami, um, new situation, new coach, and that was just really a whole rebuild. Mm -hmm. And I was the foundation, you know, the foundational mm -hmm. piece for that. Um, you know, in the first draft pick of a new, you know, regime and, a, you know, and a rebuild. Mm -hmm. And so obviously there's a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations. And in a lot of ways I laid an egg, mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm, I wouldn't change that for nothing. Cause that only drove me so much more to then, you know, prove the decision makers, right. Prove the city, right. Mm -hmm. And prove everybody wrong who didn't believe him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there was just a, a, a lot of work there being done and a lot of, you know, dark days, you know, there were a lot of dark days early to mm -hmm. where like, it was just like, hey, like, how am I gonna get out of this? How am I gonna become the player I wanna become? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? So that was definitely just an added sense of motivation just to do right by the city, by the decision makers and really to prove myself right, you know? Yeah. Um, so again, I'm definitely glad those experiences happened for me, like where it was rough for me as a rookie. And I was probably, you know, again, like I, I tell people like, if I wasn't a first round pick, I probably wouldn't have made the team. Like, that's how bad I, like, <laughs> like I, that's how bad it was for me my rookie year in training camp. It was just like, hey, we could maybe kind of maybe keep this guy around, <laughs> maybe P squad. But I, I thought it was, it, it was, was bad, it, it was rough. It was rough in the, in the, in the tape don't yeah, lie. You gotta, you gotta go back and pull up no, that film. Yeah, yeah. Go, go look. That film, if if, if y'all got time out there, go look. And, and <laughs> I mean, it's quite entertaining, to, let's just say the least. Nah, but. a lot of people don't even understand, man. Like. A big part of playing in the NFL is just your mentality, yeah. being resilient, um, being able to fight through adversity mm -hmm. and, you know, just standing the test of time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have a, a instant success, you know, um, when I got into the league and, uh, you know, even for the people who do have instant success, like right. at some point- You got to sustain that. You got to find ways At some ways point, to... you got to sustain it. And mm -hmm. at some point- it's never just going to be all good right. all the time. Like, there's going to be some point in your career and, and your mentality at that point when that when that time hits. Like some people fold, some people, you know, like really lock in and yeah. and really, you know, um, take it to the next level. And right. going through those going through those moments, those situations, whether that's injury or not having success, yeah. um, not feeling confident in yourself. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying having to having to. Uh, overwork that, you know, like, I feel like I get a lot of confidence from my preparation, my work. Absolutely. Um, and if I didn't work or if I didn't, you know, put the extra time in, I'll be going, I'll be going to the game, going to the season like, dang, I don't, yeah. really, know, I don't really know if I'm like that. I don't nah. really know, <laughs> I don't really know if I'm that good. No, for real. But when you put in that work and when you, when it, when it means something to you, mm -hmm. um, like, you get rewarded. And we're gonna talk about that later and how you got rewarded, Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> but uh, uh, when you put in that work, man, and it means something to you and you're passionate about it, yeah. and you're willing to do what other people won't do, um, that's, all, that's all you needed to, to go from what you felt like not a good football player to- Felt you're like, at. or was not <laughs> like, I'm telling you, that's what it was like, but yeah, right. Of, of, what, you, of what you are now, so. Um, you know, you enter in the league though, you've always had a big personality. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, your introduction to the fans was just draft night. Yeah. Um, you're on the stage moment with with uh with the commission. I think everybody knew instantly like dang that, yeah, this this boy's this boy's wild. Like yeah. he's gonna be <laughs> he's gonna be entertaining for sure. Yeah. So um can you talk a little bit about that? Like where that that uh joy, that yeah. that youthfulness comes from? 
again, like, I don't know, just, again, I, I feel like I'll go back to even my family. Being the youngest of eight, I kind of always got away with a little bit more and was able to just kind of like, you know, I felt like that was my role. Like I kind of said earlier, we all had a role. We all had our place. It was like, for whatever reason, I felt like that was my role to always be like the entertainer or the jokester or the fun guy, you know, and then I got to, you know, I would, lucky for me, I was able to take life less serious, you know, mm -hmm. as a, as the youngest, because I was protected a lot, you know what I mean? And just enjoy in a lot of ways. Um, so I guess that's kind of where it comes from. And just really, do, I just try to be that light or that inspiration for others. You know, um, too many times you see people down or out or having a bad day, <clears throat> not in any room I'm in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, and that's just a natural thing, honestly, for me. And I'm, and I'm lucky to be able to be that for people. And I'm glad to be able to be that for people, but it's just really always just having that, that, you know, that, zest for life and that, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, just, just pleasure and, and enjoyment <laughs> and things. So it's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. So, yeah. so your teammates love you, your, your opponents hate you. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Absolutely. And I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Truly. I would not. So. so you're, you're, you're one of those guys that, you know, people love to play with, but hate to play against. Yep. Um, proud, proud. Why, are you, why are you such a menace on the field? Hey, again, it's just it's just part of what it is. Like, um, I'm petty. Uh, like, super petty. Super petty. I, I super petty. But for again, sure. but again, I'm we're playing. A, we're grown men getting paid a, a a great amount of money to to. But we're playing a kid's game, so no one's gonna steal that joy from me. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have a lot of fun, and if you're not having fun on the other end, I'm gonna let you know about that. You know what I'm saying? Bro, or whatever. I'm not gonna let too much y'all. of my secrets out there. But, I, already, you know. I already knew you at this point where I had a fighting <laughs> issue in a game. We're playing against them in uh, 2020, COVID year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Stadium's empty. Quiet. Stadium's Dead empty. Silent. They are killing us. Yeah, I think the final score was like 48, 13 or something, 46. <laughs> right. Yeah, anyway, Don't go ahead. Speak, speak to Don't it, yeah, I remember. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a bad year. Yeah. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> We're on. They just score on us, bro. I'm mad. Yep. I'm You're mad. mad. <laughs> <We're>, yeah. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm on field goal block. He on field goal protection. He comes to the line talking mess. Like, you're yep. mad. Yeah. You're mad. And I think, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, too, I like purposely ran by you, smacked the heck yeah, out of you. Yeah. Like, just do, bro, you know, just I'm like, stuff, I'm just like, bro, here, Christian, go, bro. I'm just, yeah. I couldn't do nothing but just <laughs> laughing and like, dang, I mean, what, what yeah. can we say? They whooping us right now. There's nothing to say. Yeah. Like, so sometimes you just got to let people have it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing I can say. Um, um, but no, nah, it's, um, you bring, like I, like I said, you know, you bring a lot of emotions out of people, but that's what the game needs, man. That's what makes it fun. Yeah, um, and definitely just for me, it's like that old school mindset too. Like I'm not out there to make friends. Yeah, I want people to respect me, but I'm not really out there to make friends. Like, mm -hmm. and that's why cool my teammates respect. Great, exactly. like that love for my teammates. Great, that's all I really care about. And then you know, and just just that's just for me. Like I'm a big believer in respecting the game. That's kind of how I respect the game. Like, I hate you for those 60 minutes. We're competing hard for those 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure my that we come wins. on top and that I play at a high level. Um, but after those 60 minutes, hey, I'm going to dap you up. Hey, what's up? Hey, respect your game, all that. But you still might carry that on, you know, <laughs> outside of those 60 Some minutes. Some people definitely it, be carrying yeah, it on. Yeah, it bro. is. You know, it is what it is. But, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all love. Because, again, like I said, even starting starting this Chill, like we're all brothers in arms, you know. Mm -hmm. I understand, like everyone's got families, this, that, and other thing. So I'm just having fun while I'm out there for 60 minutes. Nah, um, sure. And you know, we, a lot of us come up from similar backgrounds and different things too. So we're all fighting for, you know, a similar goal in a sense. Again, so it's all love at the end of the day, and I yeah. can respect everyone there, everyone else in the league and their situation and what they got going on. And you know, I'm a big fan of the game, so I'm always watching guys, seeing what they got going on, and following their stories. You know, um, mm -hmm. so but again, but those 60 minutes, hey. I, no love, but then after that, it's all love. So it's all good. Nah, that's what's up. So struggle. You felt like you struggled early in your career. Um, later in your career, started to hit your stride. Twenty twenty two, um, set the record for most tackles uh, by uh, interior defensive lineman with ninety eight tackles in a season. Crazy, unheard of um, number. Follow that back up. Twenty twenty three, career high in sacks. Nine sacks. Um, balling all year, you know, Miami, uh, the Dolphins definitely, you know, turned the page. Um, you know, when you got there, weren't having much success. You guys started having success. You're balling. Team's playing well. Um, you guys go to the playoffs. Right. Um, so talk, talk to me a little bit about, you know, getting over that hump as a player. Yeah. And, you know, the, the new, you know, energy and, 
you know, on the team and, and you know, finally finding some success? Yeah, first I'll start off, you know, just as a player, just finding success. Like, and you kind of hit on it earlier. It's just like when you're faced with that adversity early, either it's going to make you or break you and you got to make the decision, like how you want this to turn out. And even now to this day, even a guy having success in this league, I still make that decision every day. Every day I wake up, every day I, you know, carry out with a process, with my process and make the decisions to be so routine and disciplined and to make all the sacrifices I do. You make that decision every day. Like, all right, do I want to be as great as I possibly can? So like, that was just kind of like my mindset always. And, you know, I just kept grinding, just kept, you know, my head down, kept working and just kept, kept hammering away, um, you know, until I was able to just find some success. And it was definitely a slow, dreadful, like grueling process, you know, like, mm -hmm. Just even, again, coming from Clemson in the system and the scheme where I could just, you know, like, you know, I was more athletic than everybody. I was able to just make a lot of plays and do a lot of things. You know, and in some ways I thought it was going to be a smooth transition. It yeah. was not. This, this is grown <laughs> men I'm growing up against, like, they technicians and all that, too. So I really just had to find my find my way and what worked for me and figure out, you know, how to work in that scheme and just how to be great in certain schemes and become a technician and all those things that are really important, become a complete football player. So I just, you know, just... You know, getting with you in the off seasons, getting with Mark, you mm -hmm. know, and just the rest of the guys too, just learning so much um, and just putting, investing a lot, not only like financially, but just time, energy, just all that stuff, just to become a good, solid player. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that was just the mindset for me. Um, and just, you know, I just really went all in and I just, even now, just you, every decision I make and devote my life is, do I want to be great or not? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, whether, you know, that's attainable or not for me to be the best, I'm going to try to be my best. So Be your best. Um, exactly. And that's that's just my focus. So I was, you know, lucky now just to, you know, be healthy and just be able to find success in this league. So that was great. And just then to contribute, to answer your second question, just to be able to then contribute now to a, you know, um, to a point later in my career, to a team that was do doing good things, winning, going to the playoffs, things that we haven't done in a while, you know, what I mean, that was that was always real cool to be a part of. Um, how was that? Know. How was uh, how was playing in in the coldest game in in NFL history? Yeah, that was kind of crazy. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. Um, uh, that was different. I ain't gonna lie. So, uh, was yeah, it was I, it really that cold? It, it was cold. It was cold. But you tried your best to just not think about it. But it was just like, hey, at some point, it yeah. was just like, nah. Like it took a while to kind of get there to where it was like. All right, I can I can thug this out, but it was tough. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but you know, but you kind of you still kind of in a weird way have fun with it too, because yeah. again, like that was just like you were like a kid back football. That everybody's yeah. kind of going through exactly, and it was just like you know you gotta you gotta get through the game. So it's like you might as well just put your best foot forward, lock in, and just you know what I mean. Like the biggest thing was my hands though. Just the hands and feet was just, yeah, was just cold. There. Like you know, so those gotta were the most our, important things. Was the gotta use our so hand and our it feet. was a tough one, but yeah, uh, it is what it is. But, yeah. yeah, um, a lot of talk about, you know, throughout the year, uh, Cam Newton's uh, system quarterback versus, right. um, you know, uh, uh, a special elite quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, Tua was put in that conversation. You've been around him his whole career. Um, talk to us about Tua, you know, as a quarterback. And yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I really had a front row seat to Tua and his growth and his development as a player and just as a teammate, as a leader, all that. He came in the year after I was – uh, uh, you know, after I was drafted and everything. So I was, you know, be able to see his whole process and everything like that. And it's, been, it's just been cool to watch um, mm -hmm. coming in. Like, you know, I feel like in a way we kind of had similar stories. You know, he was obviously highly successful at Alabama, um, you know, national championships and, you know, all of that kind of, all that good stuff. So, you know, now you come into the league and it's like, all right, now what? Like this ain't college no more, you know, kind of thing. So obviously he went through his stuff, had his struggles early, but now, you know, Pro Bowl, uh, you know, MVP finalists and all that. And, you know, I don't care what system or what scheme or anything like that. I mean, you, you're the one out there still playing. So I uh, definitely shout out to him, just the things he's been able to do and accomplish. Um, you know, and, I, and it was just cool having a front row seat to watching his development as a player. A lot of, obviously had a great career uh, with the Dolphins. Um, you know, this off season transition in yeah. for you, uh, your career, for your life. Um you know, uh, talk to us about, talk to us about that, you know, free agency, um, you know, how, how was that? How are you feeling about, you know, being, uh, leaving the team that you were, were at yeah. for so many years? And I know you were very invested, mm -hmm. um, there and, you know, loved it there, had your, um, you know, you're invested in the team success and, and put a lot of energy into your guys and, uh, your teammates. And so talk to us about free agency and talk to us about yeah. like this transition. No, obviously it's definitely uh definitely like a 
it's just, it's such a transition, you know what I mean? Cause just to your point, like, and I told you just kind of about my mindset and just how things was for me. Like there was nothing more that, that I wanted to do than to bring Miami a winner, you know what I mean? And give this city, give this people, give this organization what it, what it deserved, you know what I mean? Uh, so that was obviously just a lot of my focus just to at least do my part, you know? Um, you know, whatever that was from a leadership standpoint, from a playing standpoint, from a community standpoint, I just try to always do my part and put my best foot forward there um, and just put re- literally my heart and soul into every aspect of everything while I was here with the Dolphins. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, then now it's different. It's a little tough now moving to another organization again after you put so much into into a team and an organization. But I definitely feel like I'm ready for it. Um, you know, I'm excited for this new challenge and I definitely feel like it's, it's, it's part of my purpose and it's just part of... Uh, you know, God's plan for me just to, you know, shine my light in another, in another, um, you know, city, in another location, um, you know, and that's just what Power Rangers do. Um, they, they, <laughs> they go wherever, wherever there's need to be some butt kicking done, uh, whenever you need to fight off the evil forces, uh, you know, no matter, no matter if it's in Angel Grove or no matter if it's, uh, you know, in Planet Fatos. Okay, I'm getting real nerdy right now with the Power Rangers stuff, but you just got to follow me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter if it's Ivan, Ooze, Lord Zed, whatever, you know, you got a job to do, you're going you to fight off the evil forces, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm definitely excited to be doing it in another city, another location and for another uh, story, you know, historic uh, organization and franchise. So mm-hmm. um, I couldn't ask to be in a better situation. And, you know, I'm just hitting the ground running and I'm locked in. So, yeah. So you uh, you signed with the Raiders four years, 110 million. Yeah. You. <laughs> 27 and a half a year. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I mean, now that AD has retired, it's Chris Jones, then you. Um, man, <laughs> how's yeah. that feel? <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, like it's obviously a cool, like accomplishment and a cool accolade, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, I'm on to like my mindset, like it's different. Like, cause I was never motivated by money or whatever. I just, you know, and you could kind of, you kind of know this and attest to this. I was just always so locked in and focused on being my best. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you see me working the off seasons and a lot of ways you taught me how to be a pro. And that's why even when I got that deal, who was one of the first people I called? Like mm-hmm. I didn't call my mom right away. I didn't call family right away. Like I called my best friends and I called you, mm-hmm. I called Buck. Like mm-hmm. I was like, guys who taught me how to be a pro, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, just for, you know, helping me get to that point. Um, you know, my, my, I took, my mom might be watching. Ma, you were the first person I called. I'm lying. <laughs> um, but, nah. uh, but, you know, I called you right away. and just like, yeah, bro, thank you. You, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just for teaching me how to be a pro. Because, again, it, it didn't necessarily matter about, you know, the, the contract or nothing like that. It mm-hmm. was just helping me reach my goals as a player. Mm-hmm. And obviously the, 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 that is a part of it now. That's mm-hmm. an accolade that I do have. But... Mm-hmm. It, it just kind of confirmed, all right, you, you've done enough to where people see you the way you hope that you was able to see yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and again, I, I still got a lot of work ahead of me. Nothing's really going to change for me. My process is still going to be the same. Again, I've, I said I wasn't motivated by money. Yes, I put my Self and my family in a great situation. The mm-hmm. next generations is of Wilkinses might be all right. They got the a chance. They gonna have a chance them, now. They gonna have a chance now. You know what I'm saying? The Wilkinses so, is I'm straight. I'm down a lot more than just trauma. The Wilkinsons so. and the Wilkinson Wilkinsons right. are straight. They gonna be, they gonna be straight. <laughs> but uh, at least hopefully, you know, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, but again, that that's obviously a cool accolade. But I'm just you know motivated simply by being the best, and hopefully I can just continue on the right path and just do the things in my yeah. process and my routine to become the best player I can be because. That's the biggest thing you want. You want to leave the league healthy and know you've reached your potential. Like mm-hmm. that's, you know, play as long as you can be healthy and just reach your potential as a player. And I'm cool with that. So. Yeah. Now that you're, you're, your kids, kids, kids is going to be kids, straight. Because right. uh, I heard your nickname was Mr. Frugal. Yeah, that that is, that is accurate. <laughs> that is. Um, and I got a funny story. Don't, don't go there. Don't huh? tell the one I think you're going to tell. Huh? Are you going <laughs> to? The Oregon one? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, cool. Yeah, you get okay, that one. Okay. I thought you going to talk about the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell that one. Don't tell that one. No, no, you can tell Oregon. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, gosh. No, I'm uh, going yeah. All I'm going to say is Ocho Cinco on that one. <laughs> oh, um, but man. Now I got a funny story about Christian, man. We're, we're in Eugene, Oregon. It's actually crazy because he's so smart for this. <laughs> right? um, See? You, you no, it's, it's really crazy. People. So we're, we're training in Eugene, Oregon at, uh, at, our, at my alma mater. 
And, um, you know, we're training there for, you know, about five weeks. So we're all getting in, we're getting hotels, rental cars. So um, first day of training, we all pull up and um, we, we, we work out, you know what I'm saying? I didn't see him pull up, but uh, <laughs> we work out. And then now we're walking back to the cars and there's a, a, a U-Haul truck parked in the Oregon parking lot. So I'm like, huh? I'm like, who, who, who got a U-Haul? Christian walked right into the U-Haul. You, me. I got the U-Haul. $24, $24 a day, uh, the U-Haul truck. Um, he rented that instead of getting a rental car because rental cars was crazy. Super hard to get. It was like trying to charge crazy, like $4,000 4, for the month. The Olympic trials was out there at the time. So everything was crazy. Hotels, rental car. This man found a U-Haul truck for $24 a day. I'm like, this man is a genius. <laughs> I'm like, this man is literally a genius. Like, saved so much money. Yep. And, I mean, we're just going point A to point B. You right, know, nobody in Eugene. <laughs> like, we're just going to work out. $24 a day, you in there. Yeah, and but save I was so much money. that thing out, though. Yeah, I was, got the music was bumping. Smooth. Hey, I was driving like a, hey. <laughs> it was smooth. You I was wouldn't like, have been able to know what I was driving. Hey, it looked was, the same on the inside. <laughs> I was like, this man is definitely frugal. And so, um, you know, I'm sure not much is going to change. Not much is going to change for you, but... Um, what are you excited, uh, exciting most about, you know, joining the Raiders? I yeah. feel like, you know, the Raiders is obviously a historic franchise yeah. known for personalities, known for, you know, being bold, known for being different. Uh, so I feel like you'll fit in well, but what are you most excited Definitely. about? Definitely. Uh, to that point, I think I'm just, well, it's just cool. Cause it's kind of like a fresh start, you know what I mean? And obviously, uh, uh like, it's just kind of like the next chapter in my story, next chapter in my life, which is kind of cool. Cause I, you know, I get to write it, you know what I mean? And, you know, and it, and it all starts since March 14th when I signed on the dotted line and be the fish made it official. Uh, so, so that was, that was, that's really cool. Um, obviously just, looking forward to just becoming a part of already what kind of has been established there. Just good energy where, you know, you got a head coach who's a player's coach and allowing guys to be themselves. And, you know, he's a former player, so he knows what it is. He knows what it takes. And um, obviously just for me, I'm just looking, you know, obvious big one is looking able to help out number 98 the best I can. Obviously mm -hmm. playing next to Max Crosby will be a really cool experience. He's obviously a heck of a player and, my, you know, probably my favorite player in the league, um, you know, just because of things he does and all that stuff. So I'm just looking to be able to help him out, help the younger guys out. And again, I just feel like it was kind of my purpose and my calling and just like my call to, you know, move on to this next journey, this next chapter and to shine my light somewhere else. So mm -hmm. I'm just looking forward to all the things that's going to come with it, um, going in there with an open mind um, and just the spirit I always had just with the work comes first, grinding and you know, see where you end up. And I think, you know, the organization's headed in the right way. Again, there's so much to be excited about uh, just from a team standpoint and just, you know, everything's happening. I feel like right there. And I just want to add to it as much as I can. No, there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, super blessed. Go headed from Miami, which is an amazing city, to Vegas, which is another amazing city, up and coming city. Um, you know, a huge sports and entertainment capital in our, in our country. Right. Um, Dynamic duo playing with Max. You know, I can't wait to see you guys take the field together. It's going to be uh, amazing to see. Um, you guys are going to be dominating a, a lot of people. Um, so I can't wait to watch. I can't wait to see you in the silver and black, man. I think it's just going to be crazy. It's yeah. going to be it's going to be it's different. Be different. It's going to sure. be different. Sure. Um, but I, I do I, I do look forward to wearing the silver and black. We wore a lot of white in Miami. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That wasn't as slimming as this black's about yeah, to be. So yeah. I'm about to be looking real. You know what I'm saying? Like the <laughs> work's going to show in the all black. We're going to be real hockey. The, 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 the gastrots and all the gastrots <laughs> and the quadrilaterals. They all they all going to be on point. The intercostals, they about to look crazy. So man, that um got a few few questions for you to wrap wrap up. Um so who's who is your football idol? Okay, no, that's a good one. Um I would say again, for me growing up, being such a Patriots fan, uh, you know, I just idolized so many of them. Those guys were guys to me, but even from more specifically a defensive line standpoint, I love Big Vince. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Vince Wilfork. Vince Wilfork heck I yeah. mean, you can't go wrong uh with him. Home. Yeah, as a as a player, as a man, all that. Yeah. Um you know, and, you know, me and him have, are, I'm lucky to have a relationship with him now to this day. Um, that's dope. You know, it's really cool. And again, like, that's just, you know, 
your kid, you're idolizing someone, and now y'all good, you know, good friends, have a good relationship and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Uh, I love Big Vince and just his personality and all that stuff. And he played the game the right way, um, you know, and he was someone who kind of showed me what it's supposed to look like, you know, and something I try to bring, you know, and he just carried the game on. And I feel like we have that responsibility now as mm -hmm. current players, D-linemen, to be be that for, you know, future generations. No, he's a great big homie. Absolutely. You know, super big vet. My brother played with with Vince um, oh, okay, yeah. when he was in when he was in New England and um he said, you know, one amazing dude to, right. to be around and be a younger guy and be able to to look up to him. So yeah. Uh, Vince Wilford, that's that's definitely a great idol to have. Yeah, for sure. Um what's your your fa what's it what has been your favorite NFL moment thus thus far? Mm, okay. Um Obviously, getting drafted, that's mm -hmm. number one. It's the start. It's the foundation. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you don't forget things like your first career sack. Like, that's yeah. obviously important as a defense lineman. November 1st, you know, 2019, my first career sack. I don't remember the day. Darnold. I remember, I remember, my, I remember, Darnold, I remember third, my sack. Third and four. Sam it's, it's all that. Yeah, Sam Darnold, third and four. Um, <laughs> our first win of the season, two. it was week eight. But, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, right. Whoa. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, I remember all that. It's all right, though. But, you know, you, things like that, you don't forget as a player. <laughs> Um, and just really just really just the journey though. Like I know that might sound a little cliche, it might sound a little corny, but no, it mm -hmm. really is. Like it's just about the journey for me. Like I'm literally living my childhood dream, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm in the moment. I'm enjoying every minute of it. The good days, the bad days, the tough days, the days where you don't want to work, like all that, you know, it's just all part of it. I'm literally living living out my, my childhood dream. So um I got perspective on that. Um sometimes I do get caught up and so locked in and whatever, but like, you know, it's good to have perspective and you know, the journey's dope, so. No, that's amazing. Um, just so the people get to know you a little more, what's, uh like, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, Really, like, I'm, again, you know, I'm pretty locked in with this football stuff, mm -hmm. so I'm very, like, you know, I don't have a lot of free time. I'm typically just investing all my time into, you know, just kind of being as best as I can, but my free time, you know, I'm a little bit of a, of a thespian. Um, I love plays. <laughs> Come on, I love plays and musicals and oh, all that stuff. You oh, know that stuff. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I'm not familiar with the terminology, <laughs> See, brother. you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that. You're not a nerd like me. I, uh, I'm a thespian, so like I'm really into plays, musicals, and all that good stuff. So I love I love going okay, to okay. shows, all that good stuff. That's okay. one of my favorite things to do. Uh, my free time, and really just enjoying, like you know, going on drives. Miami was yes. a good place for that, and Vegas, Vegas would be, be a dope place Vegas for that. Vegas gonna be dope for just all the shows. Just exploring, yeah, and like you know, doing all that, going to shows, all that yeah. stuff. So Cir uh, I got lucky. Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, yeah, dope, so it's, yeah, exactly. The so. old show, you are gonna love that. Um, okay, no, that's dope. Yeah, um, yeah read a Kirk book, Eric. Damn, <laughs> you get your mind out the gutter, man. Go read a book. <laughs> I, <man. laughs> never, I never heard the term before. <laughs> 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 Thespian? Oh my, he on here. Yo, my, sister, my, my cousin, she, she was a thespian. He on here cussing on my show. <laughs> watch, your watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Hey, man, you on here cussing on my show. I don't my, know my what you talking about. My cousin, she was a thespian too. I think she <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's crazy. Man, damn, read a book, Eric. Golly. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, whoa, whoa. Um, <laughs> so, knowing you, um, past two years you did uh, broadcasting for for Sky yeah. Sports for yeah, the Super yeah. Bowl. Um, how was that, man? And do you see like um, entertainment in in that in your future? Yeah, I can definitely see that as a possibility. Uh, you know, I, I've enjoyed doing that the last couple of years at the Super Bowl. Awesome experience for me, uh, just getting that rep. <laughs> uh, you know, doing 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 those kind of things. Uh, so I could definitely see it as a possibility in the future for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's you know, got this million dollar smile. You know, yeah. so I, it'd be terrible to let it go to waste. You know, if I was in front of the camera. You know, <laughs> yeah, but man. we'll see. We'll see. I, I I got a lot of things I'm potentially interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, we'll see after ball. But you know, yeah, that's that's yeah. way down the line. Yeah, got plenty of time to figure exactly. it out. But, I'm sure um, I'll get into the political career at some point. You know, I'll start you, getting you into that to be the president. You know, you just start, Pete. Yeah, <laughs> you could, bro. You could do right. anything, bro. It's, this is America, right? Yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> anything is possible. Yeah, we like to do this on the show. What's your like top five defense alignment in the league to you? you yeah, know, yeah. Who, people you respect like their game. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll 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 keep it in house. I'll keep it in interior. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, edge guys are great and cool, but okay. you know the D tackle position has become so so dope and respected, and, and mm -hmm. it's a sexy position now. Like every every team has to have a good D tackle. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, no, in no particular order, um, I would probably say. Uh, 
I'll, I'll keep myself out of there and I'll give the other guys all some love, but um, no, <laughs> I'll say uh, uh, AD, I know he's retired now, but yeah. he, he gets Gotta the, play. yeah, Gotta he's the GOAT, like goat. so respected. Thank you, AD, for all you've done for the game. I mean, Appreciate it's like, you. It's like a top five and then there's it's AD. AD. No, seriously, <laughs> so, seriously. So I might leave him out of there too. Yeah, we're going to leave right, him right, out of there right. too. You know, AD, but AD's already right there. Exactly. We're going to do a top five minus AD. All right, cool. So obviously I like Buck, you know, yeah. your former teammate, college teammate, all that stuff, big decks. I've mm -hmm. uh, been doing it, holding his thing down, you know, two-time All-Pro. Um, uh, Jeffrey Simmons, dog. Uh, who else is there out there? Yourself, obviously. Love the things you've done. Love mm -hmm. the things you've been able to do with your game. And I learned a lot watching your tape, obviously. Um, who else is there? Um, Quinnen. Quinnen. Quinnen could do some some crazy stuff on the interior. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of guys, you know. Luck, luckily, I, I know I'm forgetting some guys, but there's so many guys, you know. Again, every team's kind of got one now at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, interior guy who can play at a high level and do things. Uh, you know, to again move the game forward and and to to put on for the big big guys interior. No, that's dope. Uh, let's give some some old linemen some respect. Some oh guy. shit, Chris Jones too. I can't forget oh, Chris. Yeah, we kind of crazy. We gotta is, gotta show yeah, Chris we, some love. We wildin', we wildin', um, you know, because he's is. he's playing my team twice a year now too. So <laughs> I want to make sure I throw him in there. Still. Don't give him no any uh, bulletin board <laughs> material, of course. Right. But yeah, um, but yeah, Chris obviously too. What he's been able to do for so long. Yeah, um, you know. Well respected. Now nah, let's give some respect to some old linemen, some guys that you played against. You said give some what to who? <laughs> give some respect to the old linemen. No, nah, I'll, I'll give it to him for sure. Nah, so who, who are some guys that you played against? Like, ah, oh, yeah. You right. You right. You okay. You straight. I, I, no. I, I, had to, I had to work today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's a, that's just what it is. You know, mm -hmm. we in the pros, so there's obviously guys who got your number or like, um, you know, get you on some days or you're yeah. like, oh, you, you're kind of straight or I yeah. see what the hype is about or whatever. <laughs> you know, there's, there's definitely that. So um, first one, again, and I'm going back to my rookie year. First, my third game of my career, I played Zach Martin. Mm -hmm. Whoop my ass. Like, yeah. I'll never forget that. Beat yeah. my ass. And I was just like, yo, now maybe I ain't really, I'm really not cut out for this. Yeah, no. Nah, and and Your I, rookie year, prime Zach Martin. Yes, yeah, that's, that's when he that's, was that's like. A, that's a tough outing. The, yeah, and I was like, nah, I was like, damn, like, Okay, he he's 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 good like that. But fast forward now to this past year, like I went into the game with a whole different mindset playing mm -hmm. the Cowboys because I I did not forget about that. I mm -hmm. was like, I owe you one big fella. Like mm -hmm. I owe you. Did a lot better this time. You yeah. know, I was built for it this time. Yeah. But you know, I, I had the scars I had to work through uh, mm -hmm. for some time because Zach Zach's like that. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of respect for him. A uh, couple young guys. Um, Trey Smith. I think he's actually a. A really good talent, mm -hmm. uh, athletic, can move, but just a big, just, just silverback dude. Mm -hmm. So, and we play him twice a year. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Rob Hunt, who's my teammate, who was my teammate here in Miami, going up against him every day. Um, you good know, battles now he, in practice. Good battles in practice, like iron sharpening and iron every mm -hmm. day. And now he just got a great deal with uh, the Carolina Panthers. So I love his game. Um, who else is there out there? Um, yeah, we'll just keep the list short for yeah, a while. We, I mean, it's easy because it's too much. Yeah, because they, you know, exactly. Too much love. We ain't going to get all out too much love. They start wild. Right, right. <laughs> start thinking, you know, but those are those are a few that come to come, come to mind right away, right off rip. But, um, no, that's what's Yeah, up. that's all the love they get. They don't get a full five. <laughs> you know, respect is love, but, you know, we'll they don't mind. We'll, yeah, we'll see you on Sunday. We'll see you on Sunday, brother. Yeah. No, that's what's up. Um, But, no, I appreciate you joining the show, bro, taking some time, man. This has been dope. Getting to learn more about you. Um, and, you know, have this conversation about, you know, anything from, from life to, to football and, um, definitely proud of you, man. Uh, I want to tell you that again. Um, can't wait to this off season for us to, you know, get back together and training sure. and, uh, preparing for the season. You know, it's going to be a big year for me, big year for you, Absolutely. both on new teams, Yeah, you know, both transitioning. And, um, so it's going to be a huge off season for us. I definitely can't wait to get back to work with you. Yeah. Um, appreciate you joining the show. Uh, I know everybody's going to love this episode. <laughs> this, man, this man's crazy. Um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Third and Long. Um, you know, this is, this is what we do. We, we, you know, we bring people on here, teach you um, about football, you know, talk about football, but also, you know, talk about uh, taking the helmet off and, and showing, you know, what makes us who we are, um, in our background and, and the reason, you know, we're, we're at in our careers today. Um, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and uh, check us out on another episode of Third and Long.